here's how I generally explain this to my students. So you've got your neuron, you've got the cell body, you've got the dendrites, these are the tree branch things that come off of the cell body, and you have an axon and you have the terminal button at the end. So the axon is the sender, the dendrites are the receivers, right, real basic. Dendrites take the message in, axon sends the message. Okay, and then the neurons don't touch each other, right? So if this neuron wants to communicate with this neuron, there's a space here. So the synapse is just a space. It's the space between neurons. But we give it a name because there's all kinds of important things that occur in this space. So it's really just a gap, but we call it the synapse because we've got all these things that happen in the gap. So when the neurons want to communicate, and uh, Dr. Kinzig really talked a lot about resting potential and action potential. Um, when they're resting, when the neurons are resting, they're polarized. Negative on the outside, or I'm sorry, negative on the inside, positive on the outside. So a resting neuron is charged. There's these charged particles. Inside the neuron is charged negative. And what happens, because opposites attract, if you have a negative charge, positive charges are attracted to it. So you have negative charge here, which attracts a bunch of positive charges around the cell. So the resting state is polarized. So she talked about that. If a neuron's resting, it's polarized. It's negative on the inside, positive on the outside. When it wants to communicate, it starts to depolarize. So what happens is it allows uh, positive ions to come into the cell and kind of creates a mixture of positive and negative ions. So she got really into like what the charge is and how much the charge needs to be. I'm not necessarily that concerned about that. I think it's interesting, but I wouldn't ask you a test question on you know, what charge does your neuron have to be? So the positive and negative are going to mix together. And as they're mixing, they're going to create an electrical charge. So the action potential is the electrical charge. The way I explain this, very simplistically to my classes, um, when I was young, okay, I grew up in Chicago, I'm a Midwesterner, right? And in the winter, you get a really dry house, right? And we used to always shock each other, right? You ever used to do this? We used to go in a circle. We had big old shag carpets. I was a kid in the 70s. Uh, we would go in a circle, me and the neighbor kids and my sister, and we would rub our feet, and then we'd just shock each other. We would just go in a circle, shocking each other. I know, we were really smart kids, weren't we? So <laughs> this was our entertainment in the winter. But if you've ever done this, right? You just shock your little brother, right? So you're rubbing your feet on the carpet, which is building up a charge, because it's so dry in the winter. Rubbing your feet, rubbing, building up a charge, right? That's what your neuron's doing. And then you go to shock your little brother, and that shock either happens or it doesn't. You either built up enough charge to shock your brother or you didn't. There's no in-between. And the action potential is the same thing. Builds up a charge, sparks. And if it doesn't spark, it doesn't spark. There's no in-between. So that may be a test question, I'm just saying. So action potential is all or nothing. There's no, it's like having a half a sneeze. You can't do that. You either sneezed or you didn't. Does that help a little bit? So what I do in this picture is I take this synapse and I blow it up bigger. That's what this is at the bottom. So this is the terminal button axon of the sender and these are the dendrites of the receiver. So when, once the spark is, is sparked, once the action potential is sparked, it sends the message and Really, you've got your synaptic vesicles here. She went into more um, detail here. Your synaptic vesicles are here. They hold the neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter is the message, right? So the, the message is being sent via a chemical. And so after, when the action potential is sparked, it releases the chemical into the gap here, into the synapse. And then the receptor sites, which are here, are going to soak up the chemical. And that's how the message gets to where it needs to be. So what happens, and I use this example just so you can conceptualize what happens here. A lot of medications will work on these chemicals, right? Like maybe you need more of a certain chemical or maybe you need less of a certain chemical. And what the medicines tend to do is they work on the reuptake process. So what happens here if this piece of chemical is in the gap and the receiver doesn't take it? It's just like if you think about snail mail, right? You send a snail mail letter and the address doesn't exist. So then it goes back to the post office and it comes back to you. Right? So that's what happens here. This didn't get received, so it gets taken back up by the sender. The sender says, all right, that didn't get received, so I'm going to take it back up. That's called the reuptake. So when you want to uh, increase a neurotransmitter, you block the reuptake. So if I block this process, this thing stays longer in here, and more of it gets to the receiver. So I always use this example because this is Prozac here. Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, all the same thing. Wellbutrin, same thing. They're all ser uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. 
So what they do is there are certain type, types of serotonin that are implicated in depression if you're taking this drug for depression. And if we block the reuptake, then more of it gets to where it needs to go. So I use that as an example so you can kind of see how it works. Um, if you want to increase the availability or decrease the availability, then you block the receptors, but that's a whole other thing. So does that clarify a little bit? And so for neural communication, I would focus on the main points, but do familiarize yourself with, I'm not going to ask you anything like, you know, what's a potassium ion? I'm not going to get into potassium or sodium ions, um, which is what these ions are. I can't remember which one's which. That's potassium, that's sodium, I can't remember. So, but the basic gist, and knowing about the action potential, that's important too.